So we're thinking positive here. We're off to a really good start. Uh, we had a 500 pound limit on all the stuff we could bring, all the tools and equipment, and we hit 470, so that's really good. Uh, also, out of the six of us going, we've got three guys from Quebec, a uh, New Brunswicker, myself from Nova Scotia, and a Newfoundlander. So, basically, <laughs> Eastern Canada's going to the north to fix some stuff, which is great. Um, <laughs> I speak French, luckily, so I'll translate the Quebecois Francais for the Newfoundlander and then back Newfoundlandese for the guys from Quebec so we know what we're going to be doing we know what we're working on we've got lots of experience on the team I mean I'm brand new but I'm going to learn a whole lot um, and as nervous as I am this is the experience of a lifetime I mean we're going to I think it's close to 20 communities and all of them are super remote fly in or boat in only most of them fly in only with almost entirely Inuit populations when, when you get a chance like this and it's my job so here we go my name is Ben Feltmate and I've been sent with a group of highly technically skilled individuals to Nunavut Canada's eastern and high arctic for the next two weeks to help with the installation of a new satellite uplink affecting every Inuit community in the territory. In short, we're bringing the internet to the Arctic. Once this installation is complete, this new network will provide a high-speed connection from each remote and isolated Arctic community to the rest of the world. Check your maps, we are officially nowhere. This is it. This is Google Nowhere, and this is where you wind up. Wow. We're starting here. Macalot, and today we're going to Pang, right, so good. and then Clyde River. Just did the weight check. We're at 470 and our limit was 500. So, off to a good start. Okay, they're fueling her up right now. That's gonna be our everything for the next little while. Like, that's our way in and that's our way out. And we're gonna be spending so much time on there, it's basically our home. Um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> Don't really know uh, what to expect uh, right now. I mean, we've had the talk about if the plane goes down, you know, you dig a hole and crawl into it and, you know, activate the beacons and... <laughs> this is gonna be an adventure. I hope I brought enough cliff bars for everyone. Also, I know you're gonna be watching this video after the fact, you know, so if I've edited this together, obviously we made it, but uh, just wish us luck.
don't think any of us really knew what we were getting into or what to expect. It was pretty quiet on the plain as we left Iqaluit, the capital of the territory, already built into endless tundra and frozen Arctic Ocean, to go deeper into the north. But the only way to know is to go. <laughs> Pretty good start. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to one of the most beautiful places on the planet, and here it is hiding up in the Arctic. This is our first stop on the trip, and this is Bangnatong. And I'm probably butchering that, so I'm going to write it right here. Uh, but everybody else calls it Pang for short. Anyway, it's beautiful mountains. Uh, according to the pilot, this is one of three days a year where the weather is this good and looks so nice everywhere. So I'm just taking tons of pictures and uh, it's a good start. We're off to a good start. <laughs> Due to the exceptional weather that we were having that day, we were able to fly through the fjord connecting Pangnatung to Kikik Tarjwak instead of over it like usual. This was about to be one of the most spectacular things I've ever seen in my life. Just 1,500 feet above the ground, we had the best seat in the house as we cruised past magnificent mountains, including some of the greatest peaks on Earth, like the legendary Mount Thor, the largest big wall on the planet. Welcome to Kikik Tarjwak. And I do not really know what that means yet, but I'm gonna find out and put it right here. The magic of editing. Oh, we literally just flew past Mount Thor. Like, no big deal. What an opportunity. We made it to Kik, drove into town, had a bite to eat at the hotel. <laughs> awesome. And got right back to work. Oh, the places you will go. I still can't believe this is my job. <laughs> wow. Kick was a little trickier and took longer than we expected. But then again, nobody said this was going to be easy. Okay, so this commissioning is taking a little bit longer than we expected, so... Right now we're going to go talk to the pilots and see how late we can possibly be here before we have to spend the night. So the pilots are like at the hotel and while we talk to them we can also ask the uh, same rooms to spare in case uh, we do end up being uh, here overnight. Basically it's 4 p.m. and we're running out of line. Like that's our story. <laughs> we're gonna make it work. We got her done and got back to the plane in time to make it to our next destination. Okay, bit of a mixed bag for day one. Beautiful sightseeing. Difficulties at the site. <laughs> but uh, we're driving back to the airport now, and I mean, we're all still here. We didn't leave anybody behind, so I guess that's that's a win. <laughs>
classic, classic adventure strategy. You pay out all your bad luck on the first day, and the rest will go smooth. Smooth as that. Sweet. North by north, by north we go. Welcome to Clyde River. Day's not over yet. And I think I'll call it right there. Welcome to the Arctic. Thanks for coming on this adventure with me. And I'll see you in part two. This is our uh, infrared camera to measure heat. Got a point of this soup. And that's just at about 53 degrees. Perfection.